All right, guys, I figured it'd be a good time to do an update as I'm testing this system right now. We'll see if there's any hiccups in it. Maybe we'll uh, get to uh, a siphon break uh, before uh, this video ends. I'll try to give enough content to get down there. But uh, you can see we're actually cycling right now. We've got uh, water pumping up out of the pump, just like I said I would. Because we don't have any media in there yet, I can actually show you what a siphon break looks like if we, uh, we line up with it, because I have the media excluder out because there's no media yet. I always like to run my ebb and flow beds uh, with no media in them before I fill them up. If there's going to be any problems, like you find out a fitting's not working right, something's wrong, maybe maybe this won't work really good, I don't know. I've never built a 50 gallon ebb and flow bed with a 3 quarter inch pipe. I've all used 1 inch. I didn't have any 1 inch bulkheads, I had some 3 quarters running around. So I figured I'd go ahead and give it a shot. You know, let's say I have to swap that out, man, it'd be so much easier without it being full of lava rock. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, but I have a feeling it's gonna work just fine. And you can see down here, that is cycling pretty good. It is definitely coming out faster than it's going in. The key, of course, is you have to bring water in fast enough to start that siphon. And you have to have it slow enough that the siphon's able to break, and we'll see if that works in just a bit. I got some other stuff I wanted to show you, though, uh, for ideas of how easy some of this stuff can be. Um, I'm going to be adding a little bit more water right now. The water that's actually being added is coming in that hose to fill this tank up. But I'm not going to bring it really, really full. I'm thinking I'm going to probably bring it about right there. So that in these bricks here, we are uh, maybe an inch over these bricks. The less water that's in here, the easier it'll be for me to heat over the winter. And uh, we need some room for freeboard for it to rise and fall. But you can see right there, that's the beginnings of a wicking bed. All I got to do is fill that with gravel, maybe about an inch. Fill it with a good, you know, light potting soil, organic. And there's a wicking bed just by sitting it in there. That's, that's all you've got to do. Um, another idea I had, I'll show you over here. A little modification I made to one of these pots up here. Check this out. So that, this is a pot that's designed to sit, let's get this over here. It's designed to sit, hold on, I'll knock my tea over. It's designed to sit on like a rail, like on a deck rail. So they've got this uh, shape in it so it can sit on a deck rail. Well, you pop a couple of those guys in there and then you've got a better wicking system than you've got with just these uh, lines down there. So that could be, you know, if I wanted to. I don't know if this is what I want to do yet, but really, really simple. There's, you know, a second wicking bed. And I mean, with this right there alone, I can grow a lot of food. I mean, plenty to have salad every day. And uh, my plan actually is to plant this thing, at least initially, by going to the grocery store. I mean, you might be thinking, where's this guy ain't got his lights set up to start plants yet. And I don't, I'm gonna try to do that today too. We'll see if it happens. Where's he gonna get plants? Well, <clears throat> my hope is to have, you know, not fully planted, but a good amount of stuff in it. And remember, I won't have a lot of nutrient in here at first, but here's the good thing. I can get this up to a point where I've got it cycled without fish, and I can do it really fast, because I can dump, dump basically things like Garrett juice or Dr. Earth right in the water. Because there's no fish in there to kill with it going too high. So I can go ahead and actually cycle it fishless get it to the point where i'm kind of happy with it and then bring some fish in the other thing is i got a bunch of goldfish in there and uh, once i get through that i could bring them in here or if i want more goldfish i mean they're they're like 19 cents or 14 cents at pet smart i can go down there and get 50 goldfish throw them in here and start cycling and they make lots of ammonia and with the tank heaters that are due in this week you know we keep this water even at like 65 degrees that's really warm for goldfish they're totally happy to eat and poo and make waste for us there Let's see, we should be getting close to a siphon break here. But I think I'll do I'll, uh, I'll do a little editing for you today. I'm going to not make you sit here and wait. I'll wait for it's close and I'll, I'll come back with the, another clip. Uh, hey, okay, we're getting close. It just uh, gave one little bubble. You can see right there. It's getting down to the holes at the bottom of the siphon. Unless I'm running the water too hot any second now, we should get a perp and a stop. I'm going to slow our flow. 
just a tad. And even though I test them like this, it, uh, it is the case that they do function actually better with media in them because there's actually a lot less water in them when the media is there because it's a displacement. There it went. There it went. There you go. Siphon broke. That's all that happens right there. So now we're filling back up. So we know about our rate of flow. I'm pretty confident in it now. And uh, I'm ready to start getting some media into this thing. And uh, maybe another 10 minutes of water. And it'll be about as high as I want it. I think I'm going to bring it to about right there and leave myself a good like four inches of freeboard. Uh, so that it can, because you got to think about it this way. This is your battery. And it discharges and recharges and discharges, and that battery's got to have room to discharge and recharge. Uh, because I have tanks, it takes a little longer to fill, but uh, I'm actually filling this with 100% rainwater. Uh, so that should remove any hard water issues that I usually have to deal with. Now, I'll probably top it up with rainwater as well. As we get ready to move fish this spring into there, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pump out about half of it and I'll bring in well water so they get a little bit more used to that water chemistry. But with like tilapia, it's not really that big a deal anyway. They're pretty tough. Anyway, that's where we're at so far today. We'll catch up with you with another video soon. All right, guys, just a uh, final follow-up for today and uh, we'll wrap up today. Um, I'm calling this going to be one of the better wins of the year, I think. Uh, and gee, we're just starting to cycle here, so that's cool. And uh, got media in the bed. And this is expanded shell. And uh, I don't think you can run a bed full of this expanded shell uh, all the way full. I think it's going to clog up on you. So what I've got is about that deep right there, and that's lava rock. And that just makes it really easy to plant. And uh, we'll be showing you some planting coming up in the future. See, I relocated that pot that I'm going to use for a wicking bed. It did make me realize, though, like if you wanted to overwinter some... Uh, so now aquatic vegetation, for instance, let's say salvinia, which I would have done this year had I gotten it out of the pond before um, before the first frost hit. Uh, you could set it a little bit deeper so you have a little bit more water in here, maybe up to here. And you can put your salvinia in here because if you're running tilapia, they're going to eat your salvinia. Well, they would be protected here, and then as it exceeded the capacity, you could just take handfuls of it and feed it to your tilapia. So you'd be growing them food. Uh, you can do that with duckweed as well, whatever. You, I've, I've settled on salvinia over duckweed. It works better in my systems, but uh, that would certainly work with duckweed. You can see I've got all this uh, insulation material. That's great. You know, you can raft with it. You notice I haven't cut any holes for raft. If I get stuff ready to raft, I'll go ahead and cut some holes. Right now, the main reason that's there is when the heaters show up, I think they're going to be here tomorrow. When I put the heaters in, it's going to make it much easier to maintain a temperature of the 60s in this tank. Uh, than it would be if that was completely open water. It's going to hold heat in. So that's where we're at. A couple other things. You notice a little white dot right there. This uh, this bed was actually a shallow wicking bed somewhere else, and uh, it got really jacked up uh, because somebody messed with the float valve in it, and we needed to drain it, so I'd pop that hole in there. So all I did was take a uh, Tough Tech screw with a little bit of silicon and plug that. And the nice thing is it's not leaking. It won't leak. But if I ever needed to drain that bed for some kind of reason, I mean, here, honestly, I could just pull the bell siphon, but pull that screw out and that's actually something that uh i've thought about doing by design in some of the other systems like i said for an ebb and flow bed you don't really need it but uh you know we're uh we're cycling and you see i got this uh framework set up here and it doesn't look like real great carpentry carpentry skills and i'm not a great carpenter i'm better than this but i'll explain what i did i have this piece of uh two by four scrap and it was about the right height so uh, I mounted that there, and I didn't have another piece of two by scrap laying around, two by four anyway, that was as tall as I wanted it to be for this light array. So I had this two by six right here, and uh, this is a good piece of lumber, and I just couldn't see cutting this up for a temporary, because uh, remember, this in the, in the spring, this will all get emptied out, everything will get moved to the other systems, and it'll, this will get put away for the rest of the year until next winter. And uh, so that's a perfectly good piece of lumber there. So I couldn't see cutting it. And if like I get stuff growing there and decide those lights need to rise up, I'll just take that piece of scrap off, replace it with something taller, and I can raise the lights up. So we got, I'm gonna have to go inside, order some LED lights for those. And uh, like I said, what I'm gonna try to do is show you how to get, you know, even this time of year, 
a system like this into production lightning fast, I'm going to go to the grocery store tomorrow, and uh, I'll be coming back with some stuff, and we'll get this planted. And I, I, I lie to you not, within seven days, we'll be eating something out of there that grew in there, and within two weeks, we'll be able to continuously come out here and harvest, and we won't have to go to the plant nursery. I know you think I'm crazy. Uh, we'll be going to the grocery store. Anyway, uh, there we go, cycling. Oh, a little hack, right? So it was having trouble getting started. And when I was running it fast enough to get it to start reliably, it was having trouble braking. So what I did is back off the speed and pop that little 45 degree fitting on the bottom of that pipe there. A lot of times what that'll do, because it causes a little bit of delay when that water hits there, it causes that to back up just a hair and you get a lot more reliable siphoning. Since I put that on there, man, it's just working like clockwork. Fills up, boom, and when it breaks, it just boop and breaks. Uh, we'll give it a couple seconds, but I don't think we're gonna, yeah, we might, here we go, watch. There we go. I took a few seconds out of it so you didn't get bored, but uh, everything just functioning perfectly. I'd say that little pump that I have down there is probably just a bit undersized. Uh, it'll work fine for this, but if I wanted two or more beds, I'd go up with a little bit better of a pump, but I had that pump sitting around. So anyway, guys, this is what I did with my weekend. I hope you did something productive with yours, and more will be coming soon.